You know, my dad always said too, it's, you can learn how to paint certain things, but if you don't have the talent, you're really not going to advance very far. And uh, he's just got great talent and uh, big fan, big fan. Great guy too. He really inspired me to, to be an artist and to dedicate my life to art. He was only a couple years older than us. We were kids. He was doing work that was, you know, way beyond, you know, anything we were seeing at that time, even in, in galleries. All we did was paint all night, and then they'd come in to shoot, and Chuck would get pissed at him in the morning. He'd say, Dad, this is no way to do this. This isn't art. Stop, action, cut, stop, action. Should have been here last night. He was really good last night. When Chuck got here the first day, um, he really just kind of stared at the painting for a solid day and just figured out how he was going to restore this painting and what he was going to do to it. Because I think, um, I don't know if he wanted to call it restoring as much as, as repainting, you know, he wanted to use the natural texture that uh, the canvas had gotten from the fire, all these burns and bubbles. and. Um, he wanted to enhance that and, and make it a new painting. So he really just took a day and, and stared at it and got reacquainted with the painting. And then the second step was just wiping as much soot off as we possibly could. And he just used some household cleaner and sprayed it down. He started out with diluting it and uh, eventually just got to just spraying the house cleaner directly on the painting and wiping it down and uh, it was taking some paint off as well as all the soot, but uh, you know, it didn't matter at that point, you know, it was gonna be a new painting no matter what. Once he had all the soot off, he had to go through and patch all these holes in the painting. There were these craters left over from the paint popping off during the fire. And we just filled those up with liquid epoxy mixed with sawdust. And that seemed to work. So he went and he covered the entire thing in resin. He painted a whole layer of resin on the entire painting and that just uh, strengthened up the canvas and made sure that it wasn't gonna be weak and fall apart. And then after he got that whole layer of resin on there, he started repainting it. So Chuck, tell us first uh, how, how you and I met. We met just a little bit over there in that building, I believe, was I was teaching Brawley how to paint as a homeschool activity. Brawley's Nick's son, as some people might know. And you were one of his many friends who hung out and you were supposed to be glass blowing or something. You brought glass blowing around. I said to Nick one day, hey, you know, I'm, I'm into this glass blowing thing. I think it's pretty cool. And he said, let's check it out. Um, this sounds pretty interesting. So I woke up real early the next morning and set up all my uh, glass blowing stuff in the driveway. And uh, Nick woke up and he stands over me for a couple minutes and watches me work and uh, says, yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think we're going to do it. Let's build a glass blowing studio on the property. And that's how um, 
I knew Nick is just always encouraging me to follow my passion. And uh, one of the most pivotal things he ever did for that was inviting Chuck out here when I was around 17. He had Chuck come out, which I think it was only supposed to be for two weeks and it turned into a month to do a painting workshop with us delinquent kids out here. And uh, he really inspired me, whether he knew it or not at the time. I think some people hate painting itself. Or the, it's too real, too honest. Crowds of buzzing birds in me to crumble at the feet of what I see. Thinking faster than your car, we fall to see how high we really are. Painting is, uh, it's my main outlet for stuff. It's everything I can't do in real life. You know, it's, it's something I do good. I think so and it lets me express myself when I can't. And even yelling doesn't do the trick, or, or even soft-spoken words can't tell. Uh, most people don't give a foot. I met Nick too in New York Stories with uh, Scorsese, which was a fluke in itself. When Scorsese said that he didn't want to have a painter, he, did, he couldn't make a decision of who should be the painter, I kept saying, well, there's a sixth character in the film, and that's the actual painting. And he said, but who are we to decide who that artist should be? You know, like, we would have to make a choice between, at that time, like, de Kooning or Schnabel somebody or somebody and he said I, I don't want to make that choice and I said well if I can find the pa painter and the art department find the painter will you go with it he said, yeah and we find the guy and so Nick came in I thought he was Chris Christopherson I didn't know the difference between the two I didn't I wasn't fed up on stuff but we got to hit it right off you know he bought a group of paintings and this one in particular was like one of my favorite ever paintings, Raising the Spirit, which was about my dad. He had just died, and it was sort of like him being risen up to heaven by the angels from the, from the skeleton that he was. As much construction as he did on the painting, as many layers of paint as he laid down, there's as much deconstructing too, going through and just wiping away uh, brush strokes. It's just such an amazing painting. It's been such a catalyst for so many important things in my life. The way he uses the colors and how loosely he paints, it's a, you know, it's a real skill. I wish I could do it. I bought three of his paintings, which I love all three of them. I'm planning on buying more. I just love his work, and I think uh, I think his work is just excellent. Throughout the week, it was just mind blowing how inspirational. Chuck is as a person and as an artist and, and as a friend. Ego doesn't take any guts. That's just blowhardedness. It takes a lot of guts to show your insides, your heart. How do you feel about doing that? I make a living off of it. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, he nailed it, you know? He repainted it. Uh, it was a new painting, um, but it was just as good or better than the first one, if not for the only fact that now this painting has such a story behind it. Now it had survived a fire and, and been brought back from the dead. It brought all this together. It brought me back together with Chuck. No matter what, it's a better painting now. 
So as a student, we would see the work come in, and one of these shows was recent art grads from, from Tyler's School of Art. Every time they bought a canvas, they would unwrap the canvas. There was a group of us who were like, oh my God, look at these, look at these canvases, they're beautiful. They're better than our professors. I don't remember anybody else's work in this particular show, but I remember Chuck's paintings like it was yesterday. Remember when you were painting and we were doing something and I called, he goes, action, and I said, cut, yeah. from the back. <laughs> and, he, and they all look back and they go, what's that? And I go, he doesn't have Elysian Crimson on his palette. <laughs> Ugh, get the Elysian Crimson. I'm looking at this reflecting light as if it's God because it gives me the light of God. <laughs> I'd like to be an actor. Yeah? Seems like an easier job. <laughs> or cameraman? No, I never would want to be a cameraman. That just seems unbearable. What do you want to know about this guy? <laughs> Why do you love his painting? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Get your hands off me. We got the whole tennis court going over there. Nick's been painting. Now his wife's painting. Little girl's painting. Using my brushes and materials, by the way. There's a guy named do you know him? He no. says he's a friend of yours. He's been telling me he's going to buy a painting for the last six months, and he says he's a good friend of yours. No, 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 no. Oh, that guy's going. Oh, <laughs> he's been stringing me along with my gallery. Okay. We're done. Wrap.